you can find an overview of all my videos at www.genesispc.com and you click on the button videos on YouTube and you get a complete listing of all the videos I created for you on Excel on Excel VBA on Access Access VBA and VB script tips it's a rich source of all kind of tricks and tools you need in order to do your work in Excel or Access In VBA you may have used the property address. If you haven't, you should know about it. If you did use it, you probably are not aware that it has much more power than you thought. I made here a small overview what address does. Cells 2 in row 2 in column 2, the address of it is string sign B string sign 2. That means when you copy that B2 to another cell, it will always stay B2. It is locked or absolute. Sometimes you don't want that to happen. You want to be able to copy your formulas so they adjust to a new situation. Address has two arguments. By default it assumes that the row is absolute and the column is absolute unless you set that to false, false, and then that address would be B2. You can even use a third argument, the reference style, inside parentheses, comma if you don't want the first one, comma if you don't want the second one, and say we want Excel R1, C1, that means this is in row 2, column 2. If you say false, false R1, C1, it says one row down, one column. And if you use the last argument relative to, which I will only mention briefly, then you can offset it towards a certain cell. So let's use that information. Let's say we want in this cell the standard error or relative standard deviation of all these measurements. We will make a VBA code that uses this address and we will make it one time absolute and one time relative. If we make it absolute I cannot copy the formula to the right, if I make it relative I can do that. So let's go to VBA, Alt F11 and we start in a new module, insert a module, a function that I called average column or standard deviation column, whatever you want to call it. I used a few variables. I say the cell you happen to be in, give me the entire table around that cell, which is the current region. Find out how many rows we have from that active cell current region dot rows dot count. If we have 25 rows, R will be 25. Don't forget the dot, otherwise we will count the number of rows in total on a sheet. Find the column number of the cell we happen to be in. I'm, I'm skipping for now this green section, and we'll explain that later. And then we are going to select the range based on from the current region dot cells the second row for we have labels in the first row up to the column C and then we take that from there up to the last row column C and select that thing. Then we use Excel's input box application dot input box is that the range you want for your standard error by default we put in there the selection address. Notice that I didn't specify that I want the relative one because it doesn't matter in this case. And the last argument is the type 8. And then we are going to say if, we, if the user has more than one column selected then we tell them please select one column. 
Then we ask the user, do you want to lock the formula, yes or no? If they say lock it, we use the absolute cell reference, otherwise the relative one. So if they want to lock it as address, which is a string type variable, has the address of what is now O select. That is what the user had selected. Else, we use the relative address. So address, open parentheses, false, false. And we close the if statement. Then we put a formula in that range. We use the formula property of dot cells row plus two. So I'm going to the last row and two more. So I'm a little bit away from the table. In column C, we want the following formula. Formula equals, and then a literal string equals the standard deviation dot s from, close your string, space, ampersand space, s address, which is either relative or absolute, space ampersand, open your string again, close the standard deviation function, divide by, the standard error is the standard deviation divided by the square root of the number of cases. So we use the square root function in Excel, and we count in the range as address how many cells we have. And then we auto fit the entire column of the active cell. Let's uh, test it. So I, I click in this range somewhere, that's going to be the active cell. My shortcut is Control Shift A. And it says, is this the entire range you want? Remember, we made that an absolute reference, so it has the string signs in it. And if I say OK, it's going to ask me next, do you want to lock the form? Let's say yes. And we get here the perfect calculation. When you click on that cell, you will see it's the standard deviation of C2 for C25 absolute divided by the square root of the count C2 for C5. In other words, I cannot copy this formula to the right. It will not be correct. Okay. Had I done the other one, I'm deleting this, Control shift a in that range. We don't lock the formula this time, so I get the same result, but this time it does not have string signs in it, so I can copy the formula to the right. And these are the standard errors or the relative standard deviations of all these values in the columns above it. We have a little problem though if the table does not start in A1, like here, it starts in B2. This one will not work properly if I if I did this formula and I uh, I say yes, lock the formula. Uh, that one is not correct. Why not? Because we have to change our formula a little bit. So I added this section and I uncomment it. If the active cell current region dot cells, the first cell in the current region, if the address is not A1, don't forget the string signs because I used address with absolute settings, then we are going to reset C to what C was, the column number of the active cell, minus the active cell current region range A1, the column number, and we correct that with plus 1. So in this case I should be able to run also in a situation like this. Control Shift A. Okay, that range. We don't want to lock the formula. When I copy this formula to the right, it should give me exactly the same result as I had on the first sheet. You need to know much more about VBA and about Excel, so I developed for you three CD-ROMs and two books. This CD-ROM and that book are specifically geared towards scientists. If you are a more general user, use the rest. And here is your VBA guide. It has more than 1500 
slides in it that tell you step by step what you need to know with VBA. It touches anything you could ever dream of. Uh, I want you to know that uh, at the beginning of 2014 there will also be an Excel 2013 VBA. I expect that very soon in March. You can find all of this at genesispc.com.